Thank you, Devana. This is awesome. Hi. I so wanted somebody to talk about writing and documentation someday because it's such a huge part of the everyday work that we do. And I'm so happy to be here and uh, to talk about these things. Thank you for having me. And whenever you guys are ready, we can start talking. Uh, I was wondering if everybody in the room could hear this because I'm sitting here, it's coming from my laptop, the audio. Everybody can hear? Yeah? Okay. All right, go ahead. Can you guys hear me well? Is it audible? All good? Yes. All good. Yes? Okay. All good. The lazy Sunday morning for me in the couch. So um, you have to bear with that. <laughs> so let me just share my screen. Um, let me know when you're able to see it. Yeah. 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 All good. All right. Okay. Um, uh, I may take five more minutes. Is that okay? Or I should be cut off in 15 minutes. Is is that a hard stop? Uh, uh, no, go ahead. Okay, great. Awesome. So um, thank you so much. A very formal and a warm um, morning to all of you. So I kind of put designers behind everything that I say because that's pretty much where I come from. But this is, it, this is applicable for everybody. Um, however, the point of view uh, is truly by being a designer, living and loving this subject for, for, for a long time. So that's pretty much, um, you know, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about. So when we kind of look at the words here, I mean, as a designer, we always start from a, from a blank slate and we wanted to understand things uh, from the base. So I always start with words. So the, the, the first word that I wanted to focus, the, the most important word in this particular title was documentation, right? It kind of, you know, if I, if I really read this from a grammatical perspective, it sounded like mm, maybe like a process, right? So that's what this told me. But you cannot really get into a process if you do not know exactly what you're trying to do. So I kind of dropped a little bit and saw the noun in it which is the document, right? So when I utter the word document, what really comes to your mind? It, it could be something like this, um, sometimes like this, okay, fine, you know, um, or kind of what the F kind of uh, feeling. So the word document has so many um, emotional responses from ourselves, it kind of captured in this, in this page that you see that, uh, okay, we kind of think about tech writing, we think about specification, we think about help documentation, we think about big manuals, books, and typically documentation, the drudgery feeling is, oh, oh my gosh, it's time taking, things like that. So more than really talking about documentation for designers, I wanted to go to the core principles, the first principles and really talk about it. So for us to understand documents, it's very important to see it in um, 3P. And I really don't blame you at all because this is something all human beings go through. Um, so why do we feel this way? Have you ever asked this question? Why, why are we feeling this, uh, whatever we are feeling? Um, so to kind of uncover this, I, I put it into uh, what marketing only will have four pieces. It, we also have three pieces. Uh, so in terms of principles, in terms of purpose, in terms of practice, I mean, if we can kind of break it down in these 15 minutes, that would be awesome. So um, from a principles perspective, I wanted to give you, I come from a cognitive science background. Cognitive science and neuroscience is what I breathe every day. And it is also called as user experience. I mean, a small part of it. So I cannot talk about something without really touching that core part. So um, from that, you know, point of view, let's really look at it. And I want to give you three nuggets um, from, from, a, from a science basis. So the first one is, um, if you kind of look at our documents, they typically look like this, right? I mean, it's kind of a lot of things and structured in a certain way. But when we have a document like this, you know, we kind of feel a little interested. It's a little colorful. And we kind of, um, if at all you're reading a document like this, you come a little forward and you look at it and say, okay, what does it have to, you know, offer me? And 
why? Why is this happening to us? And the answer lies in our brain, the way Mother Nature created our brain. If you kind of look at your brain, right? So it kind of uh, processes words in 1x speed. And whereas visuals, it processed at 60,000 times. And that's the kind of brain processing capability that you are given. I mean, I somehow feel that Mother Nature had an unfair you know, um, importance given to visuals. But this is what it is. This is the system design. So knowing this, I keep wondering, why do we keep, you know, talking in words? Um, because this is very hard on our, on our um, information processing tool, which is our brain. So this is one part of it. And I wanted to talk about the second one, right? Um, the second one is, you all love Netflix. I mean, I'm, I'm not just saying Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, Hotstar, whatever. We all love this experience, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I, I would be um, surprised to know that if somebody doesn't like all these different stories. And if you just take Netflix, and if you watch like this, it's a very different feeling. Yeah. Um, I couldn't say Netflix and chill, but yeah, in, in a way, you're very relaxed and you are looking at it and you're able to enjoy it a little bit more. And this is a phenomenal feeling. Whereas if you do this, it's a very difficult thing to do. Driving in Netflix, I really don't ask you to even try that, right? Somebody, there's this noise. Um, yeah, okay. Why are we going through this? Uh, why is that we cannot drive a Netflix? Why is that we cannot catch up and manage our time and things like that? The answer lies in um, your attention processing capabilities. I mean, it looks like a very serious model, but kind of look at it. You can, you can drive visually and you can watch visually. It's not possible for us because the attention is kind of you know, divided between the same um, you know, modality. It's very hard. But when you're driving, you're able to use your ears. You can hear music, you can talk to your friend. So auditory and visual, when it is kind of divided into both, you're okay with it. Um, in fact, in, it, it feels like it's enjoyable. I mean, sometimes you're so bored with driving and you, know, you can just catch up with the friend. And, and the reason why um, that is happening is the way our attention, you know, that, that is kind of um, shared in our brain is like this. I'm just oversimplifying it, but this is the multidimensional uh, model of how our brain works in terms of attention, which means that you cannot use the same modality for um, the same things. So you cannot use your eyes for two things at a time. You can use your eyes and ears, no problem. You cannot use... I mean, for example, somebody can talk to you in left ear, somebody can talk to you in right ear, this is very hard on you. But you can see and you can hear. So this is, this is how our uh, processing capability is. And this is the nugget number two. And the third thing that I want you to kind of, um, kind of look at is, um, there is a concept called as cognitive dissonance. I, I, I don't want to, to use big words, but I just want you to know that this is the mental discomfort that you go through. So dissonance means you are going through a discomfort because you are having a belief system which is inconsistent with your own action. You are saying that eating hot dog or, you know, probably um, a dosa is unhealthy and you are, you are actually eating it and you're enjoying it. So you kind of go through this constant questioning inside you because uh, that's causing you a little bit of mental discomfort. If you feel yoga is great and you do yoga, that day you will feel awesome. Why? Because that discomfort is gone for you, right? Um, so having said that, there is also another um, attribute that I want you to look at is the overload, cognitive overload. What that means is there's a mental discomfort because a lot of information is there for you to process and you don't have enough memory nor attention to give. And it is very hard for our brain to process it at a time. And a lot of times we go through this mental overload because there are so many things that are grabbing our, our attention and, and you, you cannot store everything, right? And that's pretty much what you go through. And I want you to remember these three things about our um, you know, information processing uh, capabilities of our brain. And from this perspective, let us really look at documentation, right? So let's look at the purpose of a document. 
And if you really uh, kind of ask a question, what is the purpose? A purpose is you send a document to somebody, means you are communicating ideas and you are, you are sending in, conveying the right information. Sometimes you're there, sometimes you're not there as an author. You cannot be shipped everywhere, um, you know, uh, to really explain things. So what do you do? You just send in a document and say, go through this and get back to me if you have any questions. That's pretty much what is the purpose. It's all about communicating ideas. Now, there are many ways in which you will be able to do this. So there are several patterns in which you will be able to share the document. It could be wordy, it could be visual, it could be animations, very expressive, it could be interactive, it could be audio, podcasting, it could also be video, it is audio and visual together. So these are the various patterns. You take any documents, you put it into, it will fall into one of these buckets only. And probably a combination of two things is how maybe you are able to create some new styles. For example, your, your GIFs, right? It is nothing but uh, uh, visuals, kind of animated in a certain way, in a very short period of time, and you kind of make GIFs. So these are the underlying patterns. The rest of it is just the creation, the, the uh, uh, combinations of the various uh, possibilities in these patterns. Now, when we look at this together, if you kind of send a document like this, a Word document, then you kind of like a, uh, a doc, a blog, an article, it's to just explain a thought process quickly. Yeah. If you try and create videos for this, you will fail because I just have you seen this in, in, in some of the lectures. We so don't want the video lectures. We just want, hey, just give me a reference document. No, I'll just get it through. And that's because you are trying to get a gist of what's going on. And for that, a wordy document really, really helps. Yes. When you need to really brainstorm and you have to articulate and you have to do it live, um, you are jotting down very important terms. Then for facilitation, things like that, you are using a, a little bit of graphic facilitation. You're using visuals to kind of help you. For example, if I send this document to you and say, understand everything that was discussed in this meeting, you will not be able to decipher anything. And this needs to happen live. It needs to be articulated along with your voice, which is your, you know, auditory. It should engage your modality as well as visual. Because it is B and A together, you will be a, you will feel great. In fact, when your professor is explaining on the board by drawing something, you kind of get it. If he or she folds their hands and just explains in words, it's very hard on you, isn't it? So it's super important that we kind of look at what is the purpose and which documentation style should I use for that? Now let's look at the other one. Where, whenever you are very uh, you know, expressive and you're trying to tell stories and you want to explain it frame by frame, right? In kind of a storyboards, you, you, are, you, you cannot capture this in words. You cannot capture this just as an image. It needs to be a little you know, articulated in an expressive way. Probably an animation can come probably a series can come, probably frame by frame can come, and you will get the story by stitching them all together. Your brain always looks at things holistically and it will not be able to understand. If I just send one part of this man, you will not be able to understand the whole story. And that's uh, very important for us to look into. And this is the third style. Let's look at the fourth style, right? Same guy, the same funny guy. Why are we feeling a certain way with this versus that, right? Um, because the document here is static and there it is kind of dynamic. So the more dynamism, suddenly your neurons are stimulated and you kind of feel a little engaged with that content. And it's very important for us to understand this. This is where the idea of, of uh, expressing, um, you know, your, your, your thought process comes. You, why are we like liking these emojis and animes and things like that? And this is the reason. And when you need to contextually explore and you have to understand it situationally, then you are using something in that context. You are making them go through it live in front of you. And that is a very much a prototyping way of doing it. Right now, I have a very simple, I mean, the imagery here is a very, um, you know, a, a low fidelity one. You can take it to any high fidelity. The idea is to explore. The idea is to explain. 
Um, we, we say it in a very funny way in the design language that a picture speaks a thousand words, a prototype speaks a million words. And that's exactly what it is. You don't have to sit and explain anything and the user will be able to understand it quickly. Even your executors, because at the end of the day, you're talking to a set of human beings only, right? Um, the last one is your live streaming, your role play, your action, your explanation, all that this, this meeting, if it doesn't have me in the video, I mean, the reason why I turn on my videos, at least in these web conferences is because you need to, the minute you are able to see my face and you're able to see the slides, there is a way that you will understand the context a little more. If I just turn off this video, the way you will understand it will be little lesser than usual. So it's very important for us to know that this is also a style of documentation where you will use this only when you have to stream things. It is so dynamic that you cannot capture it in words, you cannot capture it in visuals, you cannot even capture it in you know GIFs and prototypes. You have to do it a long piece just by um, you know, role playing, streaming and expressing and explaining, things like that. Now, now that we know all these patterns and in what different purposes that we can use it, we will see how we can put it in practice, right? Um, a very important thing is a designer should know all forms of documentation. You cannot get away with just one form, right? It's super important that you know a little bit of everything. Um, if you can, um, I, I used to say it in my lectures that uh, if I need to put a pie chart of your life, a day in the life of a designer, 40% is design work, 60% is art articulation work, right? 40% is you imagine, 60% you make others imagine what you are imagining. And that's exactly what you're doing. And for that, without documentation, you cannot do it. Have you seen that these art pieces, if you just look at an oil canvas, people pay a million bucks to it. Why? Not because there is oil in canvas, but because there is enough story behind it. There is enough document behind it. And that's the reason why people are able to absorb the story. So as designers, we are storytellers and it is super important that we should know all forms of documentation. And here is some examples that I wanted to share. Um, I, I know that I was given only 15 minutes, so I kept it very little, but in case there is another opportunity, we will share in depth of every single one of them. So let's go into the practice side of things. If you kind of look at practice, I call this thinking with hands, where when you're doodling, when you're writing, when you're sketching, when you're, you know, uh, uh, research noting, mind mapping, all these different things are basically thinking with hands. What happens is when you use your tip of the fingers and you kind of start doing things, you suddenly stimulate certain neurons in your brain. So thinking doesn't happen only with your brain. It has to happen in a whole body way. And hands is the best way for a designer because I call this as a... Um, I don't know if it is a curse or if it is a boon, but uh, we often have this, um, have this situation where we need to talk to ourselves. I call this a solo collaboration, collaboration, right? So in collaboration, you don't have anybody to talk to other than yourself. So you have to talk with yourself and you have to think with yourself. So the cognitive dissonance is very true which means that there are multiple thoughts coming and kind of clogging you. When you put it down, it's like kind of collecting your brain juice into the document and then you are able to see it in front of you. That is why when you see it in post-its and put it in, in the walls and you are able to kind of move them together, suddenly there's a connection of dots. You are able to see things holistically. And that's something I call as thinking with hands. And it's, it's super important that you do this as a designer. <laughs> Uh, for example, this is a simple uh, sketch. Um, many times I make presentations just by writing it um, in no, no time to really go ahead and make it into pretty pictures. So this is it. And this doodle also helps them understand what is, you know, what, what, what is the insight there, right? And it is just a simple, you know, ability to just tell them visually, spatially, oh, this is what it is. And here is... Here is another way of documentation where we, we capture everything that comes to us. We don't know how we are going to process it, but anything that you do with research, it's just coming. Later, we will think with our hands. We will kind of go and look at, okay, 
Um, these words are repeated again and again uh, from a qualitative research analysis perspective. We will go and figure out each item by item. But at that time, when you're capturing the notes, you're capturing everything that's coming to you. You're just a, you know, um, a documenter. You're not doing, you're not a thinker. You're not an analyzer at that point in time. So, um, any, any time to do with debriefs or interviews, I kind of put it down, which means I'm just allowing my brain to do its job. I am not a hurdle. I am not a hindrance to my own brain, right? Um, this is the best way that you can actually document. The problem with human beings is they think they know so much, but they don't allow the thinking tool to work. And this is very funny because we come in the way of our own thinking and then go through cognitive dissonance. If you just, you know, you know, keep your hands up and say, okay, brain, go ahead, think, connect the dots, tell me everything that you're thinking, I'm just going to take notes. The collaboration will give you so much more ideas that you never thought you could have ever gotten them, right? And this is nothing but I'm just catching, analyzing a system. And this is not a simple, um, you know, diagram. This is the basis of tomorrow's security solution system of a company. I am imagining their future. I'm determining their valuation. And all of that with just a piece of pen and paper. Okay, let me be a little more um, hi-fi there. Uh, Apple uh, pencil and probably the iPad paper. That's it, right? But at the end of the day, it's the same thing. We, we are, we, this, is, this is thinking with hands. Now you suddenly see everywhere the volume is popping up, trend is popping up, events is popping up. And that is, um, that is pretty much what we are trying to um, do with our thinking with hands. And if you need to go little forward and kind of, when a barrage of information is coming at you and you're just capturing them, Suddenly, uh, as a, a mind map is a fantastic tool to do that. Suddenly, you are able to see groups of, of information kind of emerging together. And because there are, there are clusters, it makes you think even better. And you can see these clusters are having affinity with each other. Suddenly, the thought process forms. And this is thinking with hands. And this is the most important skill of a designer because a lot of your time, you're going to be alone because uh, there is nobody in that room who will be able to do what you are going to do, um, which is imagining the future. That's only reason. The difference between your CEO and the designer is you both don't know anything, but just that the designer is optimistic and is able to think about the future, the CEO doesn't. That's the only difference, right? I cannot say this to a CEO. <laughs> I'll be fired, but <laughs> that's what it is. The only thing that, 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 is, that is kind of differentiating us is we have that optimism to go and say, something will come. I will be able to pull it out of my hands. And that is a document. And that is, I am a documenter forever. I don't know. I, I, I document almost everything in my life. Um, and I, I find time to do that because that's the only way I can keep myself sane with the amount of information that I deal with every day. Um, this is a simple presentation that we gave um, to just tell an, another awesome company how other awesome companies' cultures work and their documentation practices work. And it was just another document, right? I mean, it's just visual, but kind of telling them how the product culture in these companies are working, things like that. So even your, your presentations can be in this way. While I thought about this with my hands, I was able to show this also as a presentation to the senior executives and, and things like that. Now, um, for a designer, an artifact is a huge uh, deal. And these are documents that are super important um, for you to convey. Uh, for example, I, I, I go through a 20 member research. I mean, that's too much. 12 member research, a qualitative research. And finally, I come up with insights and I understand the data points. I analyze, synthesize. I do something. What is the final thing? that I am going to deliver, it's nothing but artifacts. And artifacts are nothing but documents. If you look at it, here is a persona. Can you understand the kind of customer that we are running after? And with just this one pager, one A4 sheet, I'm able to capture the entire room and say, this is the person we are trying to help. And this is what her life looks like. And this is exactly what she or he is going through as a pain, things like that. And I'm able to say, here's the journey. 
visually represented. This is pretty much how much time is being spent on um, item one, two, three, four. And here are the various activities. Here are the various touch points. This is also a document, right? Where I'm telling, they need not go through all of this and somebody looks at this artifact, they understand that customer as equally as I did by just talking to so many other customers. And that's a artifact for me. Here is, is, a, is a dream, right? I'm, I'm, I'm painting my dream and saying, here is a blueprint. This is what our, uh, you know, our solution can do to the customer. The same customer looked down how many times I'm making this person smile better and better. And that's the value that you're adding as a designer. And this is also a document. Um, um, from a, you, you can go ahead, go on and on like this. There are several artifacts, your low fidelity, your medium fidelity, your high fidelity, all of these are different types of documents that you share. Um, you can do your press releases, your qualitative interviews, your uh, canvases, value proposition canvases, business model canvases, whatever. These are all ways of showing your thinking, your process, what went behind for you to come up with this particular solution. And for a developer, all, you know, a developer uh, kind of wants is to say, how do I do this? You tell me, how do I do this? So when we deliver this, this is also a document where we are delivering specifications and we are telling them exactly, pixel by pixel, where to look for, what, what, what should they take care of, what kind of font, what is the spacing, all of these things. And we also talk about behaviors and interactions by saying that, hey, on click, this, 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 this happens. These are the various states and behaviors you should take care of. These are the behaviors and interactions. This is also a document, a specification document, right? And you can do documents for executives, like prototypes, presentations, facilitation, all of this. So here we give a report and say, this is it. This is what we went through in our engagement completely. All of that that you need to know, here it is. So for an executive, this is more than enough. A six pager is more than enough. Sometimes you need 150 pages so that they know that you have really done the work, right? Um, sometimes you do all the documents just to show that you worked. It's just a proof. Um, you, you show them, oh, this is how much we need to open up. This is, you know, this is how we came up with stuff. And all these are different types of documents that we kind of go through as designers. Um, I know that I'm up on time. So uh, let me try and say that like this, we can go on and on. For reference, I have a lot of master documents. For every project, I have a master document which says the beginning of the project, the end of the project, and everything that went in between, the kind of meetings I had, the kind of decisions we took, the kind of actions, what are the things that are dropped, differed, done, dusted, everything is kind of reflected. And I journal every day, that's also a document. We think professionalism is only about writing the specification document, not really. If you're not a better human being, you cannot be a better designer. So it's very important for you to reflect and go through, oh, today I was a jerk, it's okay. And then it's very important for you to think about those. And these are all reference documents for you. And for operations, I mean, you're not spared from it, right? Research ops, your design ops, and all of these things also happen in terms of timesheets, checklists, process documentation, all of these things. So um, my point here is there are so many different types of documents and it is not just for designers. For every profession, we do have to kind of communicate ideas to ourselves and to others. And for that, documentation is super important. And I hope um, these are all the various tools I use um, for different, different purposes. Notion is my new love. Um, I kind of walked off each shit in Sketch app because that's where I, I have an infinite canvas, so I kind of put things together. People tell me, hey, Karthi, there is one note. No, 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 I cannot draw the way I want to draw, and that's why Sketch app. Uh, Typora, it's just an MD markdown, and I, if I just need to really go through my thoughts quickly, I use a Typora. Spreadsheets, of course, you know it. Um, sometimes we need to show uh, a comparative number, quantitative breakdown of how things are, then, Airtable, again, is my new love. Uh, it's a database, uh, but it also has a flexibility of a spreadsheet. So you can kind of put things together. You can have logics, connected databases, things like that. InVision for prototyping. I'm not a, such a big fan because it's just a click through. Just in mind is better for in that case, if you want to have really interactive prototyping. Um, 
keynote for presentations pages for just documenting and screen recording i mean these tools are amazing you just need to use your mobile phone and that's a document for you and i i just create a little gifs and put it in instagram people understand it instantly and that is also documentation above all paper and pencil is the most important document i don't even open my computers for several days um because i just have a paper and a pencil and i just keep thinking and i'm able to produce uh things that can change the world and i think by documenting you will be able to kind of know just by looking back oh my god i traveled this journey or you can know oh this is how i changed the world something of that sort can happen and i hope this was helpful and uh, thank you so much for giving this opportunity to share my experience with documentation with you all I all right